What's going on guys? John Alder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're going to start to learn JavaScript. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to start to learn JavaScript. But before we get started, if you like this video, want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos to teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. It's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, we're starting a new playlist here on the channel and we're going to learn JavaScript. A lot of people have been asking me about this for the longest time. We do lots of web development on this channel and it's usually Python, Django, uh, sometimes Flask, things like that. But JavaScript is just like a cornerstone web development tool. It goes with HTML and CSS almost always. And it's just super useful for all web development. So I've got a course over at Codemy.com. You can check it out if you're interested. If you don't want to wait for all these videos to trickle out on the channel, you can check that out. But in this video, we're going to start to set up our development environment and get into some of the basics of what JavaScript is, where it goes on a web page, and things like that. So I think we're going to start this playlist by just learning the JavaScript programming language. We'll learn all the things like variables and if statements and loops and all those sort of computer programming type things. And you'll find, especially if you've been following me along with Python stuff in the past, there's going to be a lot of similarities between Python and JavaScript in the programming language section. You know, a variable is a variable is a variable, depending on, you know, what programming language, they all act the same way. They just maybe look a little different in each programming language. Same thing with an if statement. All programming languages have if statements. They just might look a little bit different. So we're going to go through all that computer programming stuff. And then once we learn the foundation, the basics of JavaScript, we'll start using them on web pages and doing cool things. So I think that's how we're going to go in this playlist and uh, should be pretty good. So let's head over to our Git Bash terminal. I'll be using the Sublime Text Editor in the Git Bash terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the videos in this series. There's only one so far, <laughs> but check that out if you're interested. So I've got my Git Bash terminal open. And if you type PWD, it says I'm in my C users slash codemy directory. Yours will say something different, whatever your logged in Windows username is. So let's go ahead and create a directory for all the files in this project we're going to do. So I'm going to say mkdir. I want to put it in my C directory and let's just call it JS. So now let's move into change directory into that C slash JavaScript directory. So that lets us know we're in the right spot. If we type in LS, there's nothing in there yet. So let's create a file real quick and let's use the touch command to do that. And I'm just going to call this index.html. Uh, we're going to create a basic web page here and we'll do the JavaScript stuff on that web page. So now if we type LS, we see there it is. So, okay, we've got our file. Now let's head over to Sublime Text and let's open that file. So let's go file open and click on your C directory and find that JavaScript directory we just created and then click on index. And here it is index.html. Now there's nothing in there. Obviously we haven't done anything yet. So let's create a basic web page and I'm just going to head back over here and let's go to get bootstrap.com. We'll just use a the bootstrap example, click on docs and then come down here to the second one and then just copy this whole thing. Let's head back over here and paste. And let's change this to JavaScript demo. And here it says, hello world. Let's just give this a little line break to push down the screen, give it a div with a class equals container. And I know this is not JavaScript, this is HTML, and we don't really care about any of this. Uh, but for now, we'll just kind of do this. And let me put some space here. Go ahead and save this. Now we need to open this in a web browser. And we don't have to do any sort of web hosting for this. We could just run this on our own computer. Uh, all you have to do is open a file explorer. Just go to your Windows start menu, type in file explorer. This should pop up. Navigate back to that directory and it's in our C drive slash JavaScript. There's our file. I'm just going to double click it and it should open in your default web browser. And you see here it says hello world. So, okay, we've got a little web page. Now for the rest of this video, I want to talk about where JavaScript goes on a web page. Before we get into the nuts and bolts of actually learning the programming language, we should probably talk about where it goes on a web page. And there's basically two or three spots on a web page it can go. And you can see down here, there's already a reference to a JavaScript file. And you can see it has a opening script tag and a closing script tag. That's always important. And then it points to some file. And this is the bootstrap JavaScript file. It allows things like if you have a nav bar at the top and you click on a link and it drops down, that little animation of a thing dropping down, that gets handled with this JavaScript. But you'll see it references this other file, this JavaScript file, down here at the bottom of the page. So you can generally do things like this, reference other files, and we'll look at that in just a second, in more detail at least. Uh, you can also add them up here at the top in the head section. 
So this is the head section. You can see here it says JavaScript demo. If we come back over here and we look up here in this tab at the top here, you can see it says JavaScript demo, with the little title right up here. That's the head of the HTML page. And you'll often reference JavaScript files in your head. You may also write JavaScript code in your head, functions for instance, and we'll look at that in just a second, and then call them from inside the body of your web page. You can also add JavaScript right on the page. So let's just do that real quick. Let's go script, and then you always want a closing script tag. And then between these two tags, you can just write JavaScript. So let's come up here, let's create a P tag, and let's say my name is John Elder, dot, 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 and close our P tag. Now, if we save this, head back over to the website and hit reload, you see it says, my name is John Elder. Very simple, just a, a regular P tag. But if we give this p tag an ID of say demo, now we can do stuff to this, whatever's in this tag with some JavaScript. Now I'm gonna write some quick JavaScript here and we really don't care what this is. We'll get into all this in much future videos, but we have to have something on the screen. So I'll just do a very basic sort of thing here. And we can call document dot get element by ID. And then which ID do we want? Demo. So remember, this is an ID of demo. We're saying, hey, get the element by its ID. And this should be a lowercase d. And what ID? The one that's demo because we called it demo. And then here we can call dot inner HTML and set this equal to some text. And let's say my name is Bob dot dot dot. Now all JavaScript statements and this line is just a statement. They all end in a semicolon. Now, if you're coming from Python, this is going to drive you crazy because Lines in Python don't end in anything. That's one of the nice things about Python, right? But JavaScript uses semicolons. So we can go ahead and save this. And since this is inside this script tag, this will just get executed on the web page. So if we save this, head back over here, you can guess what's going to happen. It changes that to my name is Bob. Very cool. So this is just a very basic example of some JavaScript on a web page. And it's just that easy. You just put it between these script tags. Very cool. Like I said, that's one way to do it. You can also, as you see down here, you can reference other files. So let's, instead of running this on the page, let's reference it in another file. So let's go file new, and I'm just gonna paste that in there. And let's go file save as, and in our same JavaScript directory, come down here and search for JavaScript, there it is. And I'm just gonna call this myscript.js. And JavaScript files usually end in .js. You can see down here, the bootstrap one ends in .js, right? So instead of running this on the page, if we go ahead and save this and run it, it just says, my name is John Elder again. But if we wanna reference this other file, we could do that. We use the same script tag, open and close, but inside of this script tag, we just say, you know, hey, call the source SRC of whatever file. Now we call this my script.js. And we can call just the name of the file because this index.html file and this myscript.js file, they're in the same directory, right? Since they're in the same directory, we can use a relative path. Otherwise, we would have to say something like C, you know, uh, I don't know, code slash whatever, right? We'd have to tell exactly where it is. But since they're in the same directory, we can just call it like this. So now if we save this, uh, it'll print out my name is John Elder onto the screen. Before we know what happens, it'll run this file then changes that to my name is Bob and it should show on the screen as my name is Bob. So come back over here, see it says John Elder, hit reload, boom, now it says my name is Bob. So same exact thing is happening. It's calling that file, it's running this script, but it's calling it from its own web page. That's kind of cool. So, you know, sort of two ways to run JavaScript on the page itself. Now we can also, uh, let me comment this out we can create a function up here in the head. And we're getting a, sort of ahead of ourselves here. We don't even know what a function is, right? But we can still call a script tag. And inside of here, we can write some functional code. So let's go, I'm gonna create a function. And we're gonna get into all this stuff, what this is in greater detail going forward. So you don't need to know what all this stuff is, but I'm gonna call this function my function. Inside of here, we can write some code. And let's write this same exact code here. I'm just gonna copy it, but now it's in a function. And now we can come down here and we can call that function. Now, functions in programming languages don't get called until they get called. Now, before we put that code on the screen down here, it just got executed when the page loaded, right? 
just automatically. This won't get executed until you specifically call it, and we haven't called it yet. And we could see that by saving this, hanging back over here and handing reload, and it just says, my name is John Elder. None of that code got executed. So how do we execute it? Well, let's come down here and let's just create a little button real quick. Uh, let's say button of type equals submit. And then we can close our button tag. And here we could say submit. Here we could say on click. And we just want to call that my function function. And anytime in any programming language to call a function, you just call the name of the function with little brackets, right? Little parentheses. And that's what we called it up here. So that's what we can call it down here. So if we save this and head back over here and hit reload, it says, my name is John Elder, but now we have a button. And if we click the button, boom, it says, my name is Bob. Very cool. Again, I don't want to overwhelm you in this first video. We're not going to get into all this stuff, but I just want you to take away from this video. There's several different places on a web page you could put JavaScript. You could put, you know, actual functions and things at the top here. You can write the code straight on the page itself, or you could put it in its own file over here and then call it like we did right here. I've commented this out, but I think you can still see it. And <laughs> just that easy. So uh, that's JavaScript. That's how to use it on a web page very briefly. So in the next video, we'll start to learn actual computer programming things, things like variables and loops and functions and arrays and all that good stuff. And it should be a lot of fun. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. So that's access to all my courses, over 60 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 180,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from Codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.